Ever feel like hack because you've secretly traced over some photo reference while putting together that nifty little portfolio of yours? Well, I think you're an idiot. In today's episode, I'll dive into the topic of tracing, explain why I don't lose any sleep over doing it every single day. So let's get started. Hello fellow artists, welcome back to YouTube's premier storyboarding channel, Ink and Grow Rich. My name is Vinny Delay, and I'll be your host on this magical little journey of ours. Recently, I posted a video where I drew storyboards for a Pace of Picante Salsa commercial. Now, Drew storyboards may be a bit generous. I essentially spent five hours just tracing every single photo the director gave me and then build them for $850. Couldn't have been easier. As I was putting that video together, I would frequently stop, close my eyes, and smile through all the future nasty comments that were coming my way. You know, things like, this guy's not a real artist. All this idiot does is trace. It requires no talent at all. Anybody could do that. This loser is a complete hack. Well, whether I'm a hack or not, this loser made $223,000 last year for a commercial storyboards. And these are the techniques he used to do so. Want to keep shoveling hate at me? When do you have to start making some money for a change? Listen, as far as I or anybody who's likely to hire you is concerned, any and all techniques you choose to employ that allow you to consistently deliver quality storyboards on time or even ahead of schedule are fair game. Literally, nobody cares. That includes tracing, shooting reference photos, photographing miniatures, recycling assets, you name it. It is all on the table. Now, I should probably make a distinction here between my channel and all the millions of other art instructional channels on YouTube. So the goal of this channel is not to make you a better artist. Now, if you happen to become a better artist, well, that's just well. But that's not the aim here. See, the goal of this channel is to teach you to become a highly successful commercial storyboard. The goal of this channel is to get you to start making some money with your talents. But the truth of the matter is, when you're tracing, you're really not improving. I mean, listen, if you want to improve as an artist, yeah, sure, using reference material, it can be invaluable. But when you're tracing, your mind just sort of wanders off and you're really not learning it. Check out my previous video entitled, Do You Have Enough Talent? To learn more about the concept of deliberate practice and have a few chuckles along the way. Suffice it to say, when your brain goes on autopilot, you're no longer evolving as an artist. But you see, I really don't care. I'm assuming you already know how to draw. I'm guessing you're more interested in trying to figure out how you can capitalize on that ability and start making some money. There you go. Thank you, sir. There you go. There you go. Listen, in my industry, there are really only two types of artists. There are the guys that get the job done well and on time, and there are guys that stand in the unemployment line. Which would you rather be? Let me tell you a little story. When I was first starting out, at the age of about 21 or so, I desperately wanted to be a comic book artist. There was no such thing as an internet back then, so if I wanted to get some critiques of my work, I'd need to go to the comic book conventions every six months and show my portfolio around to the professionals there. This convention was at the Jacob Javits Center in New York, and in addition to free portfolio reviews, they also had some speakers set up that would talk about the industry. One year, I saw that somebody was scheduled to speak in a small room on the topic of how to break into comics. This was right up my alley. I settled into the hastily set up metal folding chair, along with a bunch of other kids, all ranging in age from about 13 to 22 or so. A few minutes later, this middle-aged, slightly pudgy guy walks into the room. He stops, takes a look at all of us, and says, Well, already. So there's a door here. I'm supposed to be talking about how to break into comics. This is the first I've heard about that. But if that's what you want to talk about, we can talk about that. And so we did, but that's not all we talked about. I'd never heard this guy's name before. He was not one of the premier artists at the time. The guy was a damn genius. He showed us some of his work, explained to us that he was getting paid 800 bucks a page. He told us every time he finished a page, his wife would throw her hands in the air and yell, hallelujah, the mortgage is paid. See, for those of you who not to know, the comic book industry requires you to finish at least one page per day. So this guy was making bare minimum 800 bucks a day. This is back in 1991. That's like a gajillion dollars in today's money. All right, maybe not. But he did begin to talk about the job of being a professional artist. One day, he began, I was delivering a handful of pages to my editor at Marvel. The first page, known in the comic book industry as the splash page, was a full page aerial shot of Spider-Man swinging above Manhattan. The previous day, I pulled a book off my shelf which had a ton of photos of Manhattan in it. I found one that I liked, tore it out, pasted it onto the page, and then I simply drew Spider-Man over it. My editor freaked out. He looked up at me incredulously and said, We can't use that! Why not? I asked. Because it's a copyrighted image. It's illegal. So you know what I did? I went home and just traced over the exact same photo. 
The next day, the editor gladly accepted the revised page and sent it to print. You see, you may not be able to use somebody else's photo, but you can certainly trace right over one, especially if you add a little here and change a little there, just enough to make it less distinct. He went on to tell us that he's got an entire filing cabinet in his office. It's filled with dozens of folders. There are folders for cars, buildings, people walking, people standing, whatever. These folders were all stuffed with pages that he had torn out of various magazines and newspapers, all of them copyrighted. He then went on to explain that tracing is to artists what steroids are to professional bodybuilders. Anybody who tells you they ain't doing it is lying to your face. But once upon a time, if you wanted to take reference photos, you had to go out and buy film for your camera, shoot the photos, and then drop the film off at the developers. A day or two later, you fork over a grip of cash and get your photos back. Then you discover that half those photos would be blurry or overexposed and would be completely useless. It was an ordeal. Those photos would be blurry or overexposed and would be completely useless. Now, there's a camera in every cell phone. Even the poorest artist in America owns it. There's simply no reason not to use the tools that are at your disposal. But Vinny, what about the ethics of tracing? I mean, if you're tracing over a copyrighted image, aren't you screwing over another artist? Yeah, probably, whatever. Listen, I do whatever I need to do to get each job done, and I do not lose a wink of sleep doing it. Still not convinced? Here's another nugget of wisdom for you to mull over. We are all now competing in a global market. Now, that's great news for me. Really lousy news for you. Why? Because whether you realize it or not, you are now going toe-to-toe -to -toe with me, and I'm a lot better at this than you are. Just one decade ago, almost all storyboard jobs required you to go meet with the director at the production company and spend the day there drawing from it. That's all nice and fine, assuming the job was shooting in Los Angeles. But if one of the directors I worked with on a regular basis booked a job in Vancouver, we had no choice but to hire an artist who lived locally in Vancouver. This created an opportunity for some young artist in Vancouver, or Brazil, or Prague, or wherever you could get it. It gave somebody a chance to get his foot in the door and paid him a decent amount of money while doing it. It also gave that individual a chance to make some contacts with the production team, people who could have then recommended him for other jobs that might have sprung up in the future. But today we've got a little game changer called Skype. Today, I can work face to face with a director anywhere in the world. That means that director that loved using me here in Los Angeles, well, he gets to use me when he goes to Vancouver too. Nowadays, I regularly wake up at 4 a.m. specifically so that I can begin drawing for directors in South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, England, Prague, Barcelona, you name it. This sucks for you, because it closes the door on what could have otherwise been a golden opportunity for to flex your muscles, show the world what you can do. What does this have to do with tracing? I personally use every single tool at my disposal to consistently and prolifically deliver high quality on point storyboards, and I do it in half the time it would take for an inexperienced artist. You are competing with me. So if you've decided you're not going to trace for some ethical reason, well, good for you, little boy scout. But understand that you are seriously handicapping yourself. You're never going to get me to stop tracing. So that playing field, that's never going to be like. Might as well jump in with both feet and give me a run for my money. Tell you what, I'm going to close this episode giving you a little gift. It's the very same gift that was given to me at the Jacob Javits Center 25 years ago. Ready? I am giving you permission to cheat. I'm giving you the okay to trace whatever you need to trace. I am giving you liberation. So go forth, young artist. Trace your way to wealth and prestige. Force me out of a job if you can. And by all means, let me know how that works out for you in the comment section below. Or if after all this, you still just want to dump hate mail on me, not gang really something. And as always, if you found this video insightful or entertaining, or I'd like to see more of them in the future, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Until next time, this is Vinny Belay, and you can grow rich.